What's up guys? It's Chuck. I'm super excited to share with you guys some of the things that God has been teaching me during this time. And man, has it been a crazy time? I know it's been crazy for you guys, right? Not meeting, not uh, seeing your friends, and even online school. Like, what is that? So I feel your guys' pain. I'm here with you. But I'm really excited to share um, something that God's really been uh, showing me and uh, kind of put on my heart. So I think it all boils down to a question for me. Um, and it's, how is quarantine going to define you? So for example, in 20 years, whenever we look back on quarantine, what are we going to think of? What, what are we going to think of the time that we spent? And what are we going to remember? So that being said, I want to share a passage that actually someone sent to me earlier today. And I think um, it talks a lot about how uh, during the circumstances, faith defined these guys. So we'll jump into it. So if you have your Bibles, I'd really encourage you guys to pull them out. Jump into the book of Daniel. It's in the Old Testament, closer to the end. Chapter 3, verse 1. And I'm just going to jump right in. It does a really good job of setting it up. So verse 1 says, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide. And then later he says, He then summoned um, all the governors, all the authorities, and dedicated the image that he set up. So later in verse 4 it says, Nations and people of every language, he said this proclamation. This is what you're commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn and all these other instruments, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. It says, whoever does not fall and worship will immediately be thrown into the blazing furnace. So wow, I just jumped into a lot. Basically, King Nebuchadnezzar created this gold statue or image or idol and he told everyone, whenever you hear the music, whenever you hear that song come on, you have to bow down and worship to this idol. So later it says, All nations of people of every language fell down and worshiped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar set up. But in verse 8, it talks about a group of people who didn't do that. Jews. And um, what it says in uh, verse 10, this is the conversation that they had, um, someone had with the Jews. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn and all the other instruments must fall down and worship the image of gold. And whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. Yikes. And then in verse 12, we hear of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who they said, it says, paid no attention to that. In verse 13, we see um, Nebuchadnezzar was furious with rage, and he summoned Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And here's the thing about these three guys. They were like the king's, one of the, some of the king's officials. So they were tight with the king. They knew the king and uh, they were buddy buddy. And he asked them, he said, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, do you not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I've set up? And then next verse, now when you hear the sound of my horn, flute, all the other instruments, if you are ready to fall down and worship my image, very good. But if you do not worship it, you'll be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? So Nebuchadnezzar's like, look, if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you don't bow down and worship to my idol, you're going to be thrown into the blazing furnace. And who can rescue you? They kind of made fun of their God, which is our God too. And that's very something very key to remember. They made fun of the God. King Nebuchadnezzar did. And this is what they said. I love this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It says, If we are thrown to the blazing furnace, the God we serve, which is the same God we serve, guys, is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you set up. Wow. So he's like, hey, look, God's going to save us. And even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't, we're still not going to worship the image of gold. So King Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed, right? They were close, and now he's like mad. And later, we see in verse 22, the king commanded, the king commanded that they were to be thrown into the furnace. And it was so urgent that whenever they wrapped them up, wrapped them in string, tied them up, Whenever the soldiers took them into the furnace, the soldiers burned up too because the fire was so great. It actually talks about 
um, the fire being seven times, um, seven times stronger than usual. So then, but here's 24 verse that, um, I love this verse. It says, then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that were tied up and they threw in the fire? Then he replied, certainly your majesty. And then he said, look, I see four men walking around the fire, unbounded, unharmed, and fourth look, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. So it says, that Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the most high God, come out here. So Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego came out of the fire. And, the, and all the govern, government officials saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was the hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and no smell of fire was on them. So even when they went in the fire, and we know they did, because it says the soldiers burned up in the fire. They came out unharmed, that God protected them. And here's what King Nebuchadnezzar said. It's like a change of heart. In verse 28, Praise be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. He went from not even acknowledging this God, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, which is also our God, and then he went to praising him. That's incredible. The next verse, it says, uh, They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than to serve or worship any god except their god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses turned into piles of rubble. For no god can save in this way. Wow. So he sent out this decree. He's like, look, if anyone disrespects this God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, which is also our God, King Nebuchadnezzar is like, look, he's getting caught up in his house. This is a crazy thing. But what we see is the heart change behind King Nebuchadnezzar. And also what we see is really what I want you guys to kind of take away with is the fact of what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. They were marked by their faith, right? Because they went into the fire and they trusted God. They're like, hey, we're not going to bow down and worship to this idol. That's not what we do. That's against what God says. So what they did, they had faith in God. They're like, yeah, God's going to rescue us. But they were like, even if we don't, or even if God doesn't rescue us, we still have faith and we still trust in him. And guys, I want that to be the biggest encouragement for you guys right now. I think I can think of a million things that we can be marked by during the coronavirus and during the quarantine time. It's easy for us to just be on our phone, me included, right? I think that's the biggest temptation for us is just keep on scrolling, right? Be on Instagram, TikTok, all that, YouTube. I'm, I hear you. It's, it's awesome being on there. But also, how is that, what, how are we going to let the quarantine mark us? Are we going to be marked by being on social media all day, watching Netflix all day? Or are we going to be marked by people of faith like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Something I love is the heart change that King Nebuchadnezzar had. Whenever he saw the faith in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the way that God worked, his heart changed. Guys, I think it can be the same way for us now. Whenever we show people our faith, whenever we show people our love for Christ, they're going to notice, especially in a trial like this. So I would really encourage you guys to focus, focus on your relationship with God. Grow in your faith, guys. God's right there. God is pursuing you. But we also have to pursue him too. So I would encourage you guys to evaluate um, kind of where you're at with God. It's okay. It's okay to be where you are, but it's not okay to stay there. So I would encourage you guys, if it's reading the Bible, started picking up reading the Bible, just jump in. Jump into the book of John. It's a good starting place. If some of you are like, hey, I read the Bible every day, that's great. Maybe it's prayer you need to work on or something else. Guys, I would just encourage you to pursue God in this time and be marked by your faith in Christ. We have such an opportunity, guys, and I'm excited to see the way that God uses this. We love you guys. We miss you, and we we'll hope to see you soon. I'm going to close this out in prayer real quick. Dear God, thank you so much for your goodness. I thank you that you always stay the same. Uh, we just love you, and uh, just pray that we'd be able to be marked by faith in this time, that when people see us, um, they would see your love, they would see your mercy, and um, they would just see the love of Jesus in us, God. I pray that we'd uh, be a witness of who you are, 
um, and just be able to encourage others in this crazy time. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you soon.